Hola señoritas, welcome back to my wedding lessons. I am Hugo Alejandro, your Colombian wedding coach, and this is not Elvis. I have not named him yet, but I decided to kind of give in to the industry standard for podcasting and YouTubing. I hope you enjoy the sound, and if you don't, let me know in the comments, should I bring Elvis back, or what should I name this one? So, anyways, um, welcome to an episode that I think is going to be very crucial in your wedding planning. This is one of the most important decisions that you can make. And because of that, I have put behind me uh, one of my favorite venues. And uh, I want to definitely give a shameless plug. Uh, first off, to Spain Ranch. Please give them some love. Not yet. You gotta watch the rest of the video. But when you get a chance at Spain Ranch and Instagram, amazing wedding venue. And then also want to give thanks to right here, Taper Warren with a Tabor Warren Photography, uh, one of the most talented people that we have here in town for photography. And thank you so much for letting me use and abuse your photos as a backdrop. So the title of today is Wedding or Venue Shopping 101. The venue is gonna be the cornerstone of everything else that we're gonna be planning because if you don't have a venue, you don't have a date. And you gotta have a date to invite the guests, to book everybody else. So venue shopping is absolutely crucial. And I'm gonna tell you in my humble advice what to look for, what to avoid, and some of the pitfalls that are gonna really save you some grief. Because I'm here to help you uh, relax, dream, and enjoy it. My New Year's Eve wedding was my 900th wedding on the dot. So I'm well on my way to a thousand weddings. I have seen quite a few things and with much love, I hope that it can save you some of those train wrecks that I have seen in the past. So anyways, please take a moment to yourself, find a nice comfortable spot and maybe the drink of your choice. And let's get started with my wedding lessons. All right, so venue shopping 101. What's the first thing I gotta warn you about? Well, it is unfortunate, but I have to throw at you a shark warning. Shark warning. Okay, marketing websites. What am I talking about? I can't mention any by name, but if you just look up wedding venue near me. Uh, the first few listings are gonna be by the same few websites. And those are websites that get a lot of money from a lot of venues and vendors uh, in order to place. And it's all about the money. And if it's all about the money, then you're gonna be a number. And I am gonna repeatedly try to steer you away from any vendor or venue that are gonna treat you just like a number. If they do too many weddings uh, for their uh, ability, uh, you're gonna be just getting a cookie cutter. And cookie cutters are not in your best interest. So why am I telling you about the marketing websites? It's because the system basically uh, means that the people who rank at the top in these websites are paying the most money in order to get noticed the most. And I think that's not necessarily in your best interest. You're just seeing the people with the most money and their marketing budget. You're not necessarily seeing the best quality or the best heart behind the vendor or venue. So don't necessarily look at those marketing websites and the placement uh, in order to make a decision. I want you to take some time to research, but yes, just know that there are people out there who are just trying to make a quick buck and uh, all that matters is the money that someone else pays them and that's how you get that referral. So don't be afraid to ask uh, people who are referring other people to you. Now, do you get a kickback from this? if you don't mind me asking and see what happens see what the answer is uh, you will see it in the venue tier of things i know as a dj there have been venues throughout the years who have re requested or required a um, certain amount of uh, kickback 
for referrals. And again, you don't get the best for your uh, particular style. You just get the people who pay the most money. So be careful when you're trusting some of these websites uh, for referrals, for reviews. Many, many times it's just basically a conglomerate of very large corporations that have really great marketing strategies, but they're not necessarily looking to serve you like a boutique or somebody local would take care of you. So be careful with that, please. And with that, let's move on to uh, my next subject, which is think photos. Photography and videography, arguably, are going to be the things that you keep uh, ever after. So I do want you to see your venue shopping experience through the lens of a camera. Bring your phone, take a few shots, look at what's online and uh, see what photographers have done at a certain venue. But uh, when it comes to the venue, you want to make sure that the venue matches uh, very close to the style uh, that you're going for. If you're going rustic, well, make sure it's a rustic venue. If you want something more modern and you choose, say, a rustic venue, well, it's never going to look modern unless you spend a significant amount of money draping it or doing lighting or decor. And again, it's going to be just much more expensive. So you want to make sure that your venue choice matches the style that you're going for. Otherwise, it's going to mean a lot more uh, decor dollars that you could use elsewhere a little bit more wisely. So keep that in mind, please. Photography matters a lot. And uh, that's why I'm also using this chance to start recommending to you guys a featured venue, a featured photographer, because I want you to know that that's a, a top priority uh, in the uh, planning process. So with that, let's move on to shop local. You heard me say this in my previous video in regards to uh, um, wedding shows. So please uh, check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but yes, the uh, local people are going to be the most um, effective at taking care of you. And when you shop local versus big corporations, uh, then you're getting a little bit less of a cookie cutter and you're getting a lot more attention for the money that you're investing into your wedding experience. Now, when it comes to venues, I'm going to tell you that it is always in your best interest to find a venue near the place where you live. If you start planning too far away and you only can go there every once in a while or not at all, then you're relying a lot on basically a blind date. They're going to put the best images on the website and you might get there and be like, oh man, this doesn't look anything like the photos or I didn't see this coming. So no blind dates, please. When it comes to venues, there's got to be somebody local, uh, whether it is you or somebody who's going to help you a lot in the planning. But I would recommend at least one visit to the venue, even if it is a destination wedding, uh, you may want to go to a resort or somewhere where you have already stayed rather than a complete blind date and you're just relying on marketing materials to make the decision of your venue. I can tell you from personal experience, we attempted to uh, plan a wedding in Colorado and uh, it, we don't live in Colorado. That's where my wife's uh, family's from. So anyways, the amount of stress that we were facing just from shopping from afar made us in the end realize, okay, no, we're going to do it locally and uh, somewhere we, we can actually dictate a little bit more of the experience that we're going to have. And I'm so glad that we did that. So I think you will also benefit from that kind of decision. So again, remember to shop local along the same lines. I am going to tell you that location matters. What do I mean by this? Well, I want you to get familiar with the map of your city and start singling out where these venues are. And here are basically three things that you want to keep in mind. The first one is drive time. If you want a really big party and I'll be a DJ for a second, you want to make sure that people are not driving a long distance to the venue because everybody who drives a long distance to any event in the back of their mind are going to keep this um, uh, realization that, okay, I got to leave early 
or I'm gonna be late to relieve the babysitter or I gotta work tomorrow. So the closer you are to where people live, the longer people are gonna be likely to stay unless, and these are some of the hacks that I can tell you, unless you make everybody carpool or you provide a shuttle or a trolley service where you control when people are coming or going and sometimes if there's going to be a lot of drinking involved it is actually wiser to make sure that people get there with a, a um, shuttle service and that they uber home uh, if they're going to party again uh, but yes the longer you make people drive the more likely you are to have a reception that is going to bottom out and a lot of people are going to leave after they eat and have cake and say hi to you so just know that that I, the closer you can be to your venue the better or make sure that you make people carpool or provide a shuttle service safety is the next thing that i'm going to tell you in regards to location i have actually been to receptions where things were stolen or unwelcome guests just walked in out of nowhere having drinks and food on the bride and groom so safety and where in the map we are located in your city really matters to make sure that uh, those things don't happen to you i mean i've seen complete gift tables disappear and nobody knew where they went and it was because the venue though it was gorgeous it was just a few blocks away from a shelter and i'm not downing shelters here i'm just telling you realistically you gotta know where your venue is to make sure that safety is not a concern will your vendors be exposed to any danger if they are loading out late at night you know one two three in the morning uh, so things of that sort let's be thoughtful in regards to safety and if uh, weather is also a concern and you're doing a wedding or weather might be a factor then what kind of driveway driving in or driving out are we dealing with and are we gambling with people being stuck or having some sort of uh, accident so anyways things to think about and the last thing i want to talk to you about in regards to location matters is accommodations you want to make sure that there are plenty of hotels or lodges or places to stay nearby for people who are driving in a good amount of uh, distance or flying in uh, that way you have a great dedicated audience that is there just to see you you know the whole weekend they might choose to stay the day before the day off and the day after and then go back home then you can pretty much send them anywhere at any venue and they're gonna party with you all night long but other than that again if uh, people don't have that plan if you're not promoting that on the website uh, your wedding website then uh, everybody in the back of their mind is gonna be thinking I need to go home early so anyways let's try to prevent the things that are gonna lead to that effect and from that let's go into the amenities what are the must-have amenities that your venue should have uh, in order to provide a great experience for everybody well funny enough the first one i'm gonna mention is electricity uh, a dj or a band is gonna need a fair amount of electricity to make sure that we can put on the audio for a good show and if we're running from a generator that's less than ideal i have had equipment that got fried because a generator malfunctioned and then you don't want the dj or band or lighting people to start sending you bills after the fact because certain things were not up to par so having a venue that is legit that has all the utilities you know electricity and water and maybe even a backup plan in case power goes out you may want to ask that but uh, anyways having a little bit more of the knowledge of the utilities that are available is going to be huge but try to avoid generators please i can tell you stories from there uh, parking you want to make sure that there's plenty of parking if you have a very large wedding this is going to be crucial to make sure that everybody can get to you and also park at a comfortable spot uh, if parking is a little bit of a challenge you can always try to look into solutions like valet parking uh, where they're gonna deal with all of that and it's still gonna be a nice experience for everybody that's coming in or again we can shuttle people in if uh, parking is a uh, problem but it's definitely something you want to keep in mind most of the time you want to plan on at least one parking spot for every two guests that you're inviting and if you promote carpooling or shuttling then that becomes less and less relevant and from there bathrooms man i can tell you stories of so many times when 
there were no bathrooms that were really available for 100, 200 people, uh, or there was maybe one bathroom for that many people. And then the lines were long, we created a bottleneck, and people start to get irritated because, man, I can't even go to the bathroom in this place. And porta potties, I don't care who you are, but for a wedding, it's not the classiest touch. So I'm gonna tell you, make sure that there are enough bathrooms for your guest count. Uh, the rule of thumb when it comes to bathrooms is one bathroom for give or take every 50 guests. So keep that in mind. But yes, bathrooms are not always a given. You may want to check that as part of your tour or put it on your checklist as you tour different facilities. And then air conditioning. In the middle of August, if uh, August is summer for you, you will be tested almost no matter what the venue is. But once we reach uh, 100 Fahrenheit, then you have the indoor air conditioning really to the limit because uh, air conditioning, in case you don't know, is only made to lower the uh, indoor temperature for about 20 to 30 degrees. So if outdoors you have 110 degrees, uh, that might only be 80 degrees inside, it's gonna start to feel a little toasty. So word to the cautious, word to the wise, uh, make sure that uh, you know if uh, this place is legit when it comes to air conditioning. Uh, and this is a challenge. I am gonna tell you, I have been to many barn style or rustic style venues where in the middle of summer we found out, man, this is not a good idea or it's not gonna hold up and people are uncomfortable and they leave early because everybody's sweating even indoors. So anyways, a little bit of caution when it comes to amenities. And with that, let's move on to a little bit more of the venue touring uh, technique, okay? I want you to treat this just like you would shopping for a house. If you've ever been shopping for a house or an apartment, uh, you know that once you start touring too many places, they're all gonna kind of blur together in your mind and you're gonna start forgetting like, man, which one was that? So I want you to definitely grab your phone and you start recording, okay, you know, here we go, we're in such and such venue, and man, I really like A, B, C, or D, but I don't like this so much. You know, like, just do things like that where you're narrating over the venue, the video that you're taking, and I mean, you can do it in front of the person that's giving you the tour, if you don't mind, or you can just ask them at the end of the tour, hey, do you mind if we walk around one more time and just on our own? And most venue people are gonna tell you, oh, sure, no problem, and that's a polite way to have a chance to take photos and video but I want you to record how you felt being there because that's probably how you're gonna feel the day of the wedding and it's the most important thing that we need to replicate. You wanna make sure that you book a venue that makes you feel good, that makes you feel comfortable, that makes you feel fun. So it's not necessarily uh, if they make you feel like, you know, you are welcome or it's very warm and welcoming because of the person that's giving you the tour and i'm gonna talk about that here in a second but you want the raw feelings that just the building give you so try to filter a little bit of your emotions when it comes to the venue and just picture yourself there with all your guests the day of the wedding and see uh, what sticks from there and with that i am gonna tell you that and this is kind of a funny one the ever question does size matter well when it comes to weddings it absolutely does the venue size matters and the bottom line here is i'm gonna advise you that all your guests fit in one room if entertainment and party is important to you as a dj i'm gonna tell you the best parties we ever have is when everybody that should be partying is all in the same room. Can you have another room with a, an audio feed or something like that? Sure, but don't count on those people being the most engaged because they just aren't. Or if you put the DJ by himself in a separate room, 
don't expect a great party. It's just how it goes. I have had to do those things and it takes a lot of skill and a lot of time and energy. And at the end, we're exhausted because uh, getting the attention of a group of people without being present in the room is a very challenging thing. So size matters when it comes to the venue. I am again going to advise you that all your guests fit in one room uh, or close to it. Okay. Now, that's not the only reason why size matters when it comes to venues. Uh, size matters because if you book a venue that is too big for your crowd, the party or the vibe is going to feel very empty. Unless somehow with draping and the layout of your tables, you crowd the uh, layout, the dance floor and the area where your guests are going to be uh, to make sure that it still feels fun and intimate. You don't want it to feel like they're, you know, shopping at the big box mart uh, while they're at your wedding with huge aisles, unless of course pandemic and restrictions. But that's besides the point. But if if the venue is too big for your crowd, uh, you're also paying too much money for your venue for what you actually need. Now let's flip it. And if the venue is too small for your crowd, you're going to be suffering in several aspects where people feel uncomfortable. They might not even have a seat and they're not going to stay as long. And if you don't want people to stay long, then that's a great strategy. Book a venue that's too small for the size of the guest list. But yes, you have to make sure that the guest list size and the venue size are a good fit for each other, give or take, say, 20 to 30 people. For example, if you have 100 people that are invited, more than likely 70 are actually going to show up. So 70% is uh, about the industry standard. So if we book a venue for 100 people and only 70 come, great. If all 100 come, no problem. Even if the venue fits only 70, but 100 come, you can probably overcome that a little bit. But if you are inviting 200 people, but you only have space for, say, 100, uh, and it just happens to be a week where everybody got off work and you get 100% participation, where are you going to put an extra 100 or an extra 50 people? That's going to be a very complex task. So just be mindful of uh, what you're doing to your guests. And if you're splitting them in different rooms that you book an entertainment or audio system uh, for each of those rooms so that everybody is getting the same amount of uh, attention and entertainment, uh, or maybe consider having kids in a separate room or something to that effect to where even if you divide the crowd, it's not necessarily a, a vibe killer. So with that, let's talk about the next subject, which is weather contingencies. You want to make sure that there's a good plan B, plan C in case of weather. Um, if you're planning on an outdoor ceremony, and then the rain sneaks in last minute and we have to do it inside. Is the venue a good fit? Will they in good faith be able to fit that many people in an indoor uh, capacity and then have a room flip or something to that effect? Well, have a good plan B. Uh, I would tell you in general, as a, a practicalist, which I've become after almost a thousand weddings, well, don't even plan on outdoors have really big windows so that it feels like outdoors, but you're not really, you know, gambling with the weather. However, if the outdoor element is a huge priority for you, then sure, let's have that plan A, but have a reasonable plan B and make sure that the venue can accommodate that. Many times what I've seen is that the ballroom becomes the ceremony side. There's a flip. So you're going to make sure you can fit everybody somewhere for cocktail hour, standing room only even, and then have them come back in. And that's going to cost you a little bit more on the staffing or the catering bill because they have to flip the room for you. And uh, that's not free. It's actually a ton of work. I have helped people who didn't prepare for it before. And I can tell you it's not the kind of thing that most people are going to just do at the same rate. So room flips are uh, hard. But again, if it is raining outside and your outdoor ceremony is not going to happen, then sometimes we have to just roll with the punches. And that's exactly uh, what we can do if the venue can help you uh, with weather contingencies. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that at all costs, you should avoid tents. 
this might get me in trouble with some of our rental company friends, but I'm gonna tell you that tents are one of the single most um, dangerous venue types that I have ever experienced. Uh, with that, I'll tell you, I've had plenty of great tent weddings that were awesome, but when it comes to extreme weather, tents are not a viable solution because even just the wind in my part of the world can play games with a tent that you don't want to be inside of it when that happens. I have seen dangerous situations where the wind was enough to make a tent very uncomfortable. So just be careful. Uh, you don't want to plan for thousands of dollars worth of decor and entertainment and dance floors and audio systems and lighting systems to be in a tent where last minute everything could be ruined and you're liable for it because of a weather related uh, situation. And now wind is enough to put a sour note under a tent but then let's talk about rain if it's raining of course you want to you know have the cover for the rain but if the terrain around the tent is not treated to make sure it handles water well then the water that's coming down from the tent could also sweep underneath the tent so that has actually been a very bad blind spot at several uh, weddings that I have DJed before where last minute we're dealing with torrential rain and kind of a flash flood underneath uh, where we weren't getting wet from above, but we were not prepared to handle rain or, you know, water sweeping through at the floor or the ground level where most of the electrical connections are. So anyways, I'll spare you the stories, but uh, you know, you have to have gutters. You have to treat the surrounding area. You want to make sure that the tent is on a high spot where water that comes even from just the top of the tent is not going to be sweeping underneath and you're going to have a pool of uh, mud. Even leading up to the setup, I have seen tents that were set up early enough that it should have been okay, but it was in a valley in a low point where the tent was okay, but everything under the tent was a mud pit. And no matter what you do at that point, um, dance floors are not going to look good. Everybody is going to be walking on mud. So again, tents in general, at the risk of getting in trouble, I'm going to tell you, do not plan a large part of your wedding experience to be in there a tent and uh, expect that it's just going to be fine. It's, it's a gamble and I'm going to steer you towards more of the safer choices because at least in my part of the world, the weather is not something that you want to gamble with. Not when it comes to thousands of dollars anyways. And with that, the last uh, point that I want to leave you with tonight is... Uh, the venue staff turnover. This is also kind of a secret of the wedding industry. I have lived it uh, even before being a venue owner myself. I have seen the turnover be crazy at certain venues. And uh, it is rare that the person that is giving you the tour today is going to be there when your wedding happens. I'm sorry to say it, but it's a fact that most people don't stay at a wedding venue, but just months. In average, I would tell you that it's somewhere around six months that uh, employees stay at a venue because sometimes it's just a stepping stone. Sometimes it's a low pay uh, and high hours uh, kind of job uh, or it just so many other factors. But uh, don't fall in love with a venue because of the person that's giving you the tour. Please do me a favor. And when they're very charming and you're laughing and you feel like, oh man, this is this is my BFF, this is my homie, and I'm gonna book this venue because of that person, stop, stop yourself. And at that point, you need to back up a little bit and try to make a non-emotional decision. Most people selling you something are gonna try to charm you into the decision and to make you make a uh, an emotional approach an emotional decision when it comes to the bottom line but i am gonna tell you when it comes to the venue book the venue because of the venue don't book it because of the people uh, or the person that is giving you the tour again the odds of that person being there 
for your wedding are not very high. So anyways, I might get some hate from that, but it is the truth. If you were uh, one of my daughters planning their wedding, I would want you to know that that's not a good uh, set of uh, choices. So anyways, with that, uh, some of this has been fun, some of it not so fun, but I hope you see again in my videos that this is uh, from the bottom of my heart, from somebody who has lived through hundreds of weddings, almost a thousand of them, and uh, you become a little bit more of a practicalist. And I want you to have the wedding of your dreams. That is the first thing in my, uh, uh, in my tag is uh, relax, dream, and enjoy. I want you to dream big and I want you to have what you were dreaming for uh, but it's not gonna happen if we turn a blind eye to some of these things that I'm trying to warn you about so if you found this video helpful please consider liking subbing and also sharing this with people who might benefit from it um, and with that um, again links in the description to the people that I'm featuring the venue featured today the photographer featured today uh, and then some of the other videos that it might be helpful for you to watch and then let me know in the comments what you want to see what are some of the other subjects that maybe you want me to cover in more detail or some of the things that I haven't covered yet in videos that uh, we should put out there. So anyways, and with that, I'll leave with this, but I don't always teach people how to have amazing weddings, but when I do, I do it right here and my wedding lessons. Are you ready to party?